Hey everyone, I'm Ryan from Ratings.com, and today we'll be testing the LG B9. It is the new 2019 entry-level OLED TV from LG. Last year's B8 was crowned our best TV recommendation, so let's see if the B9 can handle the pressure and possibly dethrone its older brother. Unlike last year's model, the LG B9 supports HDMI 2.1, so it's great for future-proofing and has HDMI Forum VRR, eARC, and will soon support 4K 120Hz content according to LG. We have the 55-inch version here, but we expect the results to be valid for the 65-inch as well. First, we'll look at the design of the TV and then move on to the picture quality. We'll also check out how the TV handles motion, input lag, and sound, and then see how it stacks up against other competing models. You can skip straight to our test results if you'd like by clicking on the links in the description below. Let's get started. First, we'll look at the design. The LG B9 follows the same design language LG has been implementing in their OLEDs for the past few years. The panel itself is super thin and is mounted to a plastic bottom section that houses the electronics. It's a look that we've become very familiar with by now and is nice. The stand is made of plastic and is a bit thinner than last year. It's a bit disappointing though because the front of the stand on last year's B8 was made of metal. The downgrade to plastic isn't a big deal, but it feels less premium and introduces slightly more wobble. Besides that, the relatively narrow center-mounted stand allows the B9 to be placed on smaller entertainment cabinets and gives a good amount of clearance if you want to add a soundbar or speaker in front of the TV. The controls, or control I should say since it's one single button, is located just under the center of the screen. It can turn the power on and off, change the input and control the volume and channels, but the LGs have a great smart interface that is capable of so much more, so using the Magic Remote is almost a must and it's heavily recommended. We'll look at the smart features a little later on in the video. As we quickly look at the side profile of the TV, you can see the extremely thin panel I mentioned just a moment ago. The borders are also very thin at about a third of an inch thick. The whole TV, including the bottom part, is thin as well, so if you wanted to wall mount it, it would look great without protruding much at all. The B9 has minimal cable management, and in reality, it's just a single clip in the back so you can hide the cables behind the stand. It works well enough, but there's no cover for the ports like the Sony A9G or the LG E9. So, if you want a more elegant cable management solution, you should also consider looking at those amazing offerings from Sony and LG. As we turn the TV back around, we'll take a look at a thermal image of the heat distribution of the display. Since this is an OLED TV where every individual pixel is independently controlled, the light, and therefore heat output, is fairly uniform across the screen. The bright spots along the bottom edge of the screen are most likely the connectors providing power to the panel. On to the picture quality. We'll be comparing the LG B9 to other competing models, but that might change as new TVs come out during the year. To stay up to date with the comparisons as we buy and test new models, check out the review page on our website linked in the description below. One of the most important aspects of picture quality is the contrast. Contrast is the measured bright and dark areas of a scene, which means better bright and dark detail as well as punchier colors. Since the B9 is an OLED, it can turn off individual pixels and display pure black. The B9 has an effectively infinite contrast ratio that makes images pop. OLEDs like the B9 have a big advantage over LED counterparts, such as the Samsung Q80R, which use a backlight with local dimming zones to control the contrast. Since it's controlled in zones and not at a pixel level like the B9, the contrast ratio isn't as high. The LED TVs have their own advantages though, as the higher end models like the Samsung Q80R can get noticeably brighter than OLEDs. Although OLEDs can display perfect blacks, they often have trouble displaying near black scenes. The LG B9 is no exception and looks similar to other OLEDs like the Sony A8G and the LG C9. In a dark room, there can sometimes be vertical and horizontal banding that can occur. It can be distracting if some movies and TV shows are displaying near black content and all you see is banding. Happily, this is a pretty rare case scenario and most of the time it isn't actually a problem. This is because these bands are only visible when the TV is viewed in a very dark room, so most of the time you'll never even see it. One last thing that we did see was the near black level flashing some users have reported on OLEDs. This only happened when we were calibrating the TV at low brightness levels and didn't experience it in any other situation or with real content. We expect this to be very rare and is not likely to cause any issues. The LG B9 may not be perfect in near black scenes, but at all other stimulus levels, the gray uniformity is excellent. For those who aren't sure, our gray uniformity test checks the uniformity issues with the panel where different pixels are supposed to display the exact same color but may not. This is done by taking a picture of a 50% gray pattern on each TV. Cloudy spots and other issues present on this slide are known as the dirty screen effects, which are problematic when playing games or watching sports, which often tend to display uniform colors across the screen. The LG B9 has almost no dirty screen effect, which falls in line with other OLEDs that use the same panel, such as the LG C9 and Sony A8G. 
It also slightly outperforms LED competitors like the Samsung Q80R, which may not have bad DSC, but do present some vignetting on the sides of the screen that the B9 does not have. Moving on, we'll look at the viewing angles. Viewing angles are important in most cases where you might not be watching the TV head on and still want the image to remain accurate at an angle. OLED TVs have self-emissive pixels, which means the light is dispersed over a larger area than VA LCD TV competitors. In other words, the LG B9 viewing angles are great. The image remains bright, colorful, and accurate when viewed at an angle. The colors do shift, and color washes out noticeably far off axis, but this should still give you a very good viewing experience. LED competitors usually can compete with OLED viewing angles, but technology advancements like the optical layer Samsung includes on their highest end QLEDs are getting LED TVs very close. Next up, we'll evaluate how well the B9 looks in average lit and bright rooms. There are two parts to a TV that help with this, how well it handles reflections and its maximum achievable brightness. In terms of reflections, the B9 performs almost identically to other OLEDs on the market like the Sony AHG and the LG C9. It cuts the light pretty well, and the glossy finish makes reflections well-defined and clear, which is usually less distracting. The Samsung Q80R still has the best reflection handling we've seen, thanks to a special anti-reflective layer Samsung added this year. It does a fantastic job and cuts a lot of light, and it's something we'd like to see on more TVs in the future. The second important part to bright room viewing is peak brightness. The LG B9 has a good peak brightness and is suitable for a fairly bright room. Our B9 was a little brighter than last year's B8, the model it's replacing, but we're unsure whether this is a real difference or simply due to variance between panels. Also different from last year is the inclusion of the peak brightness setting found on other 2019 LG OLEDs like the C9. It basically changes how the auto brightness limiter, or ABL, performs. On high, it's at its maximum brightness, but static content on the screen will cause it to automatically adjust the light output and lower the brightness pretty quickly. Like that. <laughs> If you'd rather have a more stable light output from the TV, you can turn off the peak brightness setting and the TV will have a more stable peak brightness around 280 nits. The LG B9 supports most HDR formats and has a good HDR brightness. HDR brightness is important for different reasons than SDR brightness. The higher dynamic range allows for more detail in the bright and dark areas of the scene and HDR brightness is important in delivering impactful and detailed bright highlights. The LG B9 can achieve a maximum HDR brightness of 603 nits, which is good, but not as high as the LCD competition. The Samsung Q80R can get much brighter and will have more impressive highlight detail. Let's move on to the color aspects of the TV. The LG B9 had one of the worst pre-calibration scores from an LG TV this year, which surprised us. The color temperature, white balance, and color accuracy were all off beyond the visible threshold. We don't know if this is the case with all B9s, but we were able to calibrate the TV easily without wrestling with it too much, and the resulting post calibration was excellent. A wide color gamut is important for producing vivid colors in HDR content. The B9 can produce a wide color gamut, which is great, and is on par with other OLEDs tested this year, like the LG C9. It also has a good color volume, which is very similar to the Samsung Q80R, and is better than the competing OLEDs like the AHG and even the C9 but this may be affected by variance in the brightness. We also measured the EOTF, or electro-optical transfer function, of each HDR TV. This is when the TV receives a stimulus or signal to display a certain brightness, and this graph shows if it can properly follow the reference standard. The yellow line you see here is the reference PQ curve. This reference line is unachievable by any TV at the moment though, so every TV has a way to tone map the input signal to the display's capabilities, and that is the gray line you see. The B9 follows it accurately, which is good for those of you who care about watching movies with accurate colors as the director intended. Like other OLED TVs, the B9 may have the risk of burn-in after displaying long periods of static content. It uses an organic compound excited with electricity to emit light, and the organic matter can degrade with usage. We don't expect burn-in to be a problem for most people who change the content that they watch though, and you can check out our video series linked in the description below for an investigation into this issue. Now, we'll move on to the motion handling of the B9. The response time of the display is the amount of time it takes for a pixel to change from one color to another. OLEDs generally have a near instantaneous response time, and the B9 follows suit. This results in almost no blur trail behind fast moving objects, which is great for sports and video games. Unfortunately, that means there's no blur smoothing the motion, and low frame rate content can appear stuttery, especially in slow panning shots. To alleviate this, motion interpolation can be enabled if the soap opera effect doesn't bother you. OLEDs, like the uniformity, have trouble with things at near black levels. 
The response time is also affected by this, and dark content can sometimes have faint artifacts. It is often difficult to see these issues, however, since the content is usually too dark to highlight any issues. If you care about an even clearer image when gaming, then black frame insertion can be used to clear up the persistence blur. We were under the impression that the LG B9, like the C9, B8, Sony AAG, and Samsung Q80R, was supposed to support BFI. But in testing, we found that although the menu has the BFI setting, it doesn't currently work. We are not sure if this is a hardware limitation or a software bug, and if it is just a software bug that gets updated in the future, we will update the review on our website and pin a comment to this video below. Now, let's move on and take a look at how the TV performs in terms of gaming, more specifically, input lag. A low input lag is important to reduce the delay between an action in-game and when you see it on the screen. The LG B9 has excellent low input lag at around 14 milliseconds in 1080p, 1440p, and 4K 60Hz. It is similar to the LG C9 and a small step better than last year's B8. It's one of the best low input lags available on the market and just a tiny bit better than the Samsung Q80R. This TV also supports HDMI 2.1 gaming features such as HDMI Forum VRR, 4K 120Hz, and Auto Low Latency Mode, which we tested with our Xbox One S for compatibility. We aren't able to test HDMI Forum VRR or 4K 120Hz just yet, as no HDMI 2.1 sources are currently available. As soon as they become available, we will test these features and update the review on our website. Let's move on to the smart features. The LG B9 comes with LG's latest version of WebOS 4.6. It is a very intuitive and easy to use system. The remote is also really nice to navigate and it has a mouse-like pointer and a scroll wheel that helps navigate the menus quickly and is nice for inputting text. The WebOS smart system has lots of apps preloaded and many more to choose from on the LG content store. You're sure to find the app that you need. The home menu bar makes it really easy to quickly jump between inputs and apps with further menus if you want to dive deeper. Unfortunately, WebOS is not ad-free and there's actually quite a few ads that pop up regularly. The two consistent areas we see ads is on the home menu bar on the left-hand side and a large ad at the top left of the content store. Our unit even had an advertisement for other LG products. The ads can't be removed and suggested content can't be completely disabled. On the bright side, the LG B9 is able to interface with other LG products through the home dashboard and is able to connect to other smart devices in your home through the Google Assistant built in. Keep in mind the remote that came with the TV is necessary to use these functions. Finally, we'll look at sound before doing a final comparison between the LG B9's competing models. The sound is good on the B9. The TV itself can decode and play Dolby Atmos content, but it does not give the full effect of a true Dolby Atmos surround. The low frequency extension is at 67 Hz, which is decent for a TV, but doesn't produce any thump or rumble to its base. The B9 doesn't distort too much at even relatively high volume either. For a better sound experience, it is recommended to get a dedicated sound system such as a soundbar or discrete speakers with an AV receiver. So overall, the LG B9 is a terrific TV with remarkable picture quality. It is the successor to the LG B8 and looks very similar. The design is nice, but plain. The overall performance is similar though, and the B9 is only better in a few aspects, some of which may be important to you. The B9 has a better input lag, color volume, SDR peak brightness, and gray uniformity, but we aren't sure if those last two are real differences or if they're just due to panel variants. On the other hand, the LG B9 doesn't have a functioning black frame insertion feature at the time of review. Compared to the Sony AAG, the LG B9 is a better TV for gamers due to the HDMI 2.1 features and the low input lag. For our usage other than gaming, both sets deliver excellent picture quality. The Sony has a more accurate picture out of the box, and people tend to like Sony's motion interpolation and upscaling a bit better. These are unfortunately not evaluated completely yet, but it is something that we're working on improving. Now, compared to the LG C9, the C9 is a slightly better TV. Out of the box, our C9 was more color accurate and got brighter in HDR. The C9 also has a much better gradient handling, which is due to the faster image processor found in the C9. The faster processor is also supposed to help with motion interpolation and upscaling, but this isn't evaluated fully yet. Otherwise, the B9 and C9 are almost identical, besides design, and they use the same panel. Compared to an LED competing model, the Samsung Q80R, there are lots of inherent differences since they both use different technologies. The Q80R has no risk of burn-in because it is an LCD TV. The Samsung will get brighter and deliver more impactful HDR content, and is better in a bright room because of its amazing reflection handling. The B9, on the other hand, can turn off the individual pixels for a better contrast and black uniformity, effectively meaning it performs better in a dark room. Gaming-wise, both TVs are great, both having low input lag and VRR features. Whichever is better between the two is dependent on what matters to you, and both would be excellent choices. 
So that's all for today. Are you a fan of the LG B9? Have you bought it? Let us know in the comments section below. You can check out all of the measurements from this review on our website. And hey, if you like this video, subscribe to our channel for more videos. Also, if you want to access our latest test results first as we buy and test new models, become an insider on the website. Lastly, we are currently hiring in our offices in Montreal for various positions. So, if you want to help people find the best product for their needs, have a look at the careers page on our website. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.